the Punta Gorda, Florida, police corruption goes on, still no answer 6 MTHS later, yet a regular person would have been crucified by now. Lee Cole is guilty but still on paid leave. And Chief Tom Lewis needs to be charged with negligent homicide Punta Gorda police shooting. Six months, still no answers. Mary Knowlton Knowlton shooting still under scrutiny. By Ann Isker. Staff writer. Punta Gorda, six months after Punta Gorda police officer Lee Cole fatally shot a 73-year-old woman during a demonstration, the public is still in the dark on investigations into the incident. Cole remains on paid administrative leave awaiting word from the state attorney's office if he faces charges in the tragic shooting. The victim, Mary Knowlton, volunteered for a shoot-slash-don't-shoot demonstration at the police department on the evening of August 9. Thirty-five members of the Chamber of Commerce watched as Cole pulled the trigger, firing the shot that killed the retired librarian. Immediately following the incident, Police Chief Tom Lewis called on the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to conduct an outside investigation, which lasted more than two months. The FDL turned its sealed findings over to the state attorney's office in October. Samantha Sion, a spokesperson for the state attorney's office, said the review may be finished at the end of the month. The office is waiting on additional investigative elements. City leaders have said they would withhold judgment and comments on the police department case or what the fate should be for Cole and Lewis until after investigations are completed. We understand and appreciate that everybody has questions and wants answers, Mayor Rachel Kiesling said in August. In time, we will be answering those questions, but right now, it is imperative that we protect the integrity of the investigation being conducted by the FDL and the internal review that will follow. City Manager Howard Kunick emailed a follow-up statement to The Sun this week. As we wait to hear from the state attorney and obtain a copy of the FDL and state attorney findings, we continue to provide our business-centric, customer service policing that has served us so well in Punta Gorda, Kunick said. And it is our duty to let the state officials complete their investigation in as independent and thorough manner as they deem fit. Even without a conclusion to all the probes, Knowlton's family received a $2.06 million settlement in November, releasing the city from any further liability. For now, the family, Cole, and the rest of the community, are waiting for answers. State Attorney Stephen Russell has said he won't rush the review of the investigation, and in the judicial system, there are no instant answers. However, other cases have been resolved much quicker by the state, including an investigation into the death of Greg Ireland, an inmate who died at the Charlotte County Jail. In that case, the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office conducted an internal review and turned its findings over to the state attorney's office on April 19. Within two months, Russell's office made its report public, concluding that no action by any XO law enforcement supports any criminal charge or further criminal investigation. Around the country, law enforcement officers in similar positions to Cole have received light sentences, or simply been let off the hook. According to a study by Bowling Green University headed by criminologist Philip Stinson, only 54 police officers involved in fatal shootings from 2005 to 2015 were charged. Among the cases that have been resolved so far, 21 of those were acquitted or had their charges dropped. Most cases in which prosecutors pressed charges included other factors, such as a victim shot in the back, a video recording of the incident, incriminating testimony from other officers, or allegations of a cover-up. To charge an officer in a fatal shooting, it takes something so egregious, so over the top, that it cannot be explained in any rational way, Stinson concluded. In a phone interview this week, Stinson said that in an accidental shooting, as this case appears to be, the normal question of whether deadly force was justified doesn't apply. Instead, prosecutors will be looking for probable cause of negligence or recklessness. They could bring a negligent manslaughter charge against Cole, or they could label the incident as a freak accident. In accidental shootings, 
There's a reluctance to charge police officers if there is no negligence involved, Stinson said. But there's got to be negligence by somebody if they didn't check the weapons. Russell said whatever actions his office takes will be dictated by the facts of the incident, and they have prosecuted law enforcement officers in the past. Prosecutors are in a tough spot, according to legal experts such as UC Irvine Law School Dean Erwin Chemerinsky. Since most prosecutions rely on maintaining the credibility of the police, when the on-duty actions of officers are under investigation, prosecutors face an impossible conflict of interest between their desire to maintain working relationships and their duty to investigate and prosecute police, Chemerinsky said in the Harvard Law Review. In the meantime, the Punta Gorda Police Department is preparing for the Punta Gorda Citizens Academy, when civilians will once again gather to see firsthand what police officers do. According to Lt. Katie Heck, the syllabus for the police department session in March is not yet finalized. Policies instituted after the incident prohibit the use of firearms capable of firing live ammunition during community presentations and require the presence of a designated safety officer, as well as a first aid kit and automated external defibrillator, both absent during the August killing. For his part, Lewis said this week that he would propose a policy to govern the kind of weapons used at police demonstrations to the Commission for Florida Law Enforcement Accreditation. Critics have said that common sense would have dictated not pointing a gun at a citizen during the mock exhibition that ended Knowlton's life, whether or not Cole knew it was loaded or had blanks. Several agencies interviewed after the killing indicated that they never aim real guns at civilians or use them in simulations. Since the shooting by Cole, the city officially gave Cole the department's trained K-9, Spirit. The pair were at the center of a mauling that resulted in a $70,000 settlement for a bicyclist in October. Little had been revealed to the public about the dog incident until after a video went viral, and that case was again raised this week at a testy public gathering with the chief. Cole has not commented publicly on his actions. Email Esker at sun-herald.com All new on Wink News at 6. The chief has been doing a PR campaign about, I'm open, I'm honest, anything you want to talk about. Well, he doesn't want to talk about these other incidents. Um, he didn't release these other incidents until you had to go digging through like a madman to find them. Wink News pushes to get memos from the Punta Gorda Police Department about Lee Cole, the cop who shot 73-year-old Mary Knowlton during a shoot-don't-shoot shoot citizens demonstration back in August. These are memos that have never been made public before. And tonight we'll tell you about the memo from an officer who trains other cops witnessing Lee Cole making what she basically calls a wrongful arrest. Wink News investigative reporter Dave Colbreth has the exclusive. This sort of stuff should be unacceptable in any law enforcement agency. He was a one-man wrecking crew in Punta Gorda, and, and nobody tried to stop him. Is he fabricating things? Is he making things up just to make the arrest? Three longtime Charlotte County attorneys, all who have also been prosecutors in their career, read this memo about an arrest made by Lee Cole, which the Punta Gorda police never released until Wink News spent a great deal of effort and hundreds of dollars. Just shows that the Punta Gorda Police Department was hiding this stuff. Every, every news agency in the country was asking for these type of documents. The memo really hit home for Steve Leskovich because it was about his client, Jacob Hill. You always hear about corruption, but then to actually read it and know that it happens to someone you know is actually quite disheartening. On June 23, 2015, Officer Bonnie Buckaloo sent this memo to the Punta Gorda Police Administrators. They knew roughly eight hours after this arrest. Buckaloo, along with another officer, came upon Lee Cole, who had pulled Hill over for driving the wrong way on this one-way street. First, Cole had his dog sniff around the vehicle for drugs, but it did not detect any. After that, Cole said that he was changing hats and now going to try for a DUI. He's fishing for something. Buckaloo also wrote that Cole did not ask any of the related DUI questions. 
and that she did not observe anything that would indicate an impaired driver. Falling over, stumbling, no odor of alcohol, no bloodshot, watery eyes. None of that information is written anywhere in any of the reports. Buckaloo summed it up by writing that Cole performed the requested sobriety exercises without any notable concerns and that he probably should not have been placed under arrest. It's shocking to read an officer's report that says another officer was seeking or finding a reason to make an arrest. Why is he even arrested? Apparently, that's also what people in the state attorney's office wondered because Wink News obtained these documents from them where a prosecutor writes, I do not see how there was enough for a DUI arrest. And if that's out, then there's no probable cause to search. I, I would bet a thousand bucks. The state attorney had no idea that there was another officer on scene who believes that this was a false arrest. So the state attorney's office started playing let's make a deal and said it would drop five of the seven charges, including two felonies and the DUI. DUI getting dropped almost never. I mean, it is a very, very rare circumstance. I can count on one hand how many times a DUI has been dismissed prior to charges being filed. This is one of them. When the state attorney's office offered to drop most of the charges, Jacob Hill pled to minor possession of weed and got out of jail immediately. He pled to those because he was in jail for 35 days and he needed to get out. Who's not going to take that? Wink News talked to Jacob Hill, who lost his driver's license for a whole year, his apartment, and his job. And now when he's looking for employment, what shows up on his background? A DUI. Who the heck's going to hire somebody with that kind of record? So, what did the Panagorda police do about this memo? It said it was successfully prosecuted with the means of a plea. And I have to tell you this. Any department that defines this as a successful prosecution, they should all resign. Without asking, the Punagorda police also gave us emails saying things like, Buckaloo seems to have an obvious dislike for Lee Cole, stating to other officers that she refuses to acknowledge him or back him up on traffic stops. She's one of their current own. She's part of the blue line. You don't cross it. She crossed it. Would he have taken that plea had you known about this email, this memo? Absolutely not. When I talked with Jacob Hill, he said he came down here because he's a roofer and needed to work year-round. Well, after all this, he said no one would hire him, so he had to go back to northern Minnesota, and he said, try making a living there doing roofing in the winter. When we asked the Punagorda police for an interview, we were told, the chief will not be providing an interview on the memo you referenced. Continuing the public discussion of Officer Cole's work product prior to the conclusion of both FDLE's investigation and our own internal investigation is unfair and possibly improper on our end. That memo, as well as last night's story regarding those other memos, are on our website at winknews.com. Dave Colbert, Wink News Now. I think that that was a, a sign of just arrogance. I mean, you don't, you don't need to double and triple check yourself. You don't need to have other people double and triple check you. You, you. you don't have to have a procedure in place. You don't have to make sure. Like, all of those things just make me sick to my stomach. On August 9th, three dozen people watched as a Punta police officer shot and killed a woman during a Citizens Academy demonstration. Officer Lee Coles still on paid administrative leave after the death of 73-year-old Mary Knowlton. But could it have been prevented? Tonight, only Wink News has memos that were not in Coles' personnel file. After weeks of requests and hundreds of dollars spent, Punta police finally gave us those memos with allegations of bad arrests, insubordination, and policy violation. Wink News investigative reporter Dave Colbreth has the details. Nobody should be running around this town with a gun and a badge with, with these type of allegations against them. No self-respecting law enforcement agency that I've ever encountered should be tolerating this kind of behavior. Those are two longtime Charlotte County attorneys. Both of them were shocked 
when I showed them these memos obtained by Wink News after the Punagorda police fought hard to prevent us from getting them. Just shows that the Punagorda Police Department was hiding this stuff. Every, every news agency in the country was asking for these type of documents. These new memos show Lee Cole's problems with the Punagorda police. But Cole's problems started in his rookie year with the Miramar police, where he was involved in two internal affairs investigations. This one, where he yanked a man out of the back of his cruiser. After just one year, Cole was forced to resign. He then applied for jobs at over two dozen police agencies near Miami. Wink News obtained Cole's application files from most of them who turned him down. So he then redirected his efforts to southwest Florida, where the only agency interested in him was Punta Gorda. It was a year after he left Miramar when Cole was hired by Punta Gorda. Miramar got it right. The other 25 police departments that refused to hire him got it right. Punta Gorda got it wrong. Cole's personnel file with the Punta Gorda police shows many positive things he's done. But then there's these newly obtained memos that were not in his personnel file. When you hire somebody that was uh, asked to resign from a different police force, they should be on thin ice. The first incident Wink News discovered is depicted in this memo. It was February 4th, 2015, when Cole accidentally discharged his taser at home. He was never disciplined. To have an officer um, not check his taser before he does a spark test, that is... Barney Fife stuff. On October 23, 2015, a supervisor, Thomas Keegan, wrote this memo saying Cole was insubordinate to him and questioned his authority. I think that him being insubordinate to um, his lieutenant is, seems to, to kind of go along with all of the other misconduct that he's alleged to have engaged in because, you know, each one of those is kind of him being arrogant. Then exactly one week later, Cole saw a man riding his bicycle at night without a light. The man wouldn't stop, so Cole sicked his dog on him. But Wink News has now learned from this email that there was what was called a community initiative in place, where officers were supposed to give warnings and free bicycle lights to people instead of arresting them. The Punta Gorda police ultimately settled with the man for $60,000 and over $120,000 worth of medical bills were written off by a hospital. The Punta Gorda police also hired an expert who determined that Cole did not do anything wrong. I don't care what they say, you know, him allowing that dog to rip the chest wall out of a man who was uh, driving without lights on a bicycle, that, that's insanity. The dog bite issue got attention around the world and Cole said he was receiving death threats. So he improperly accessed the state computer system to remove his name from public records. He got a slap on the wrist from Chief Tom Lewis who ironically illegally accessed the same system himself five years earlier and got suspended. As an attorney, I mean, the Florida bar would, would, be, would be smacking me around something fierce because you can't just engage in constant misconduct. He's got five or six incidents of serious misconduct. He's still a cop. We asked Punta Gorda police officials for an interview about this story, and we were told, quote, the chief will not be providing an interview on the memos you referenced. Continuing the public discussion of Officer Cole's work product prior to the conclusion of both FDLE's investigation and our own internal investigation is unfair and possibly improper on our end. Now, after all of that, that's not the most egregious things these attorneys say Lee Cole has done. That involved a wrongful arrest. We'll have that tomorrow night in part two of this story. Dave Colberth, Wink News Now.
shot under his right armpit. These drugs and stuff like the German jails, they would have. We got seven. I'm a Canadian originally. We got seven but times Andrew, more. Will you, will you do me a favor? What's that? If you want to record me, I have no problem. Right. Um, yeah. But this is not a public building. Uh, last time we were here, we already discussed it. Uh, they said we could. But there are other people here that may not know that you're recording that. Okay. Last time I was here, they asked. I asked if I could record. They said yes. I have no problem with it. Right. I believe the facility is probably in the same mindset as they yep. were last time. But just out of common courtesy, let people know they're being recorded, please. You're being recorded. Well, wait. Everybody's here. You have to let them know too. Are you running? Uh, he, he doesn't answer questions. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> you did. 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 You Good. You from Fort Punta Gorda? Oh, did you did you move him yet? So am I. Now tell me he was Canadian. This is John Sertan. This is Ian. This is the guy that's uh, doing all the filming, going for public records requests and stuff. Oh. They like him. They like him so much. They trust him. <laughs> they do. I'm very popular. I, I, what was the What was the latest video on? That? <laughs> Looking for a trespasser to him. Mm. Mello. Oh, Jim Mello was trespassing from a real estate office for causing a disturbance in there. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. And, uh. But the only record you got was 2015. Hey, that was the one? Yeah. Oh. Cool. But they were giving the other guy, like, a hard time about getting out of uh, the record, so, you know, I had to go down there and straighten those things out with him. Yeah. Hey, hey, Tom, and by the way, we tried to get L.A. Daniels and the, and the black people to come today. I'm totally serious. Totally serious. I said, let's meet here and have a conversation. It's a shame. It is. So. The huh? Maybe next Thank month. Can be the same time, same place? The meeting's canceled? Yes, sir. Why? <laughs> we're, 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 we're the community. We're the community. We're the Woods community. We can't. Uh, we, we can't be a part of it. You don't remember the Trade Woods community? No. Oh my God. That's you that's a good you point. <laughs> you got your number, you man. Just you just told me it's a it's, a it's a meeting to discuss in the community, and now it's canceled. Yeah. Wow. But seriously, I really appreciate you, gentlemen. No, but you told me a few minutes ago it's here to discuss a community discussion meeting, and now it's canceled. Meeting's canceled, yes, sir. Because I thought it was a community discussion meeting. That's no. what you told me a few minutes ago. Yeah, we're members community. of the community. We'd like to be heard. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming. When will uh, Cole uh, face <laughs> justice? <laughs> will Officer Cole ever face justice, Mr. Lewis? <laughs> That's a great point. Ask again. Will Officer Cole ever face justice, Chief Lewis? What about Officer... What, what about Tom Lewis? Lewis? Oh, what do you want to do? Go for coffee? This is, let's not waste the time. This is a I can't. I'm shocked too, man. 
He just told me uh, that you're going to have a meeting, right? It's, and I says, "What is it about?" And he says, "It's just a community to discuss things in the community." Right. He did, wasn't specific on which community, though. Yeah. Yeah. That. Well, that's no, crazy. No, that community. Exactly. I says, "What is it, you know, about?" And I says, "Well, that's great. That's what we should have." <laughs> <laughs> it ain't worth it. Okay. I mean, you know, once they've got their mind made up. All right, so what do you want to do? Let's not waste this. You want to do coffee somewhere or what? Sure. Terry, <laughs> where's, where's the closest place for coffee? You could have just used this community center. We don't have to have anybody here. I, I can't. But that's what I don't, can't figure out. This is a public place. Mm -hmm. Why do you, you don't even need any kind of permission to Right. Go? I don't understand that. He he's supposedly saying I do have the right to film, but I'm supposed to let everybody know. Uh, don't believe that's true in Florida. We've got to trust part. I'd like to find out what God they're talking about. That is true. What kind of trust is that? So Ian, let's go, let's not waste it. Let's do coffee somewhere. Wait. All right, let's. So John, you want to do coffee somewhere then? Where's the closest? I hey, I'm shocked too. Totally shocked. I'm totally shocked, man. So what do you want? You want to follow us or? Yeah, I'll follow you. All right, we're down here. I'm in the white convertible. Okay, I'll follow you. So what do you want to go for coffee? Let's not waste it. Whatever you decide to serve coffee. Man, I'm just easy to get out with, man. He just he just shut the meeting down. He said we're, we're not from the community, so he canceled it. <laughs> so let's let's not waste it. What you want to do? Let's do coffee somewhere. I'd give it about two or three minutes. These two just showed up for the meeting. I know. Well, now, now two black people just showed up from the community, so are they going to have a meeting? I know, that's, that's why he said, uh, maybe wait a minute. Oh, have you ever seen anything like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. All right. Are you here for the meeting? Are you here for the meeting? Hey, we got. I think we got a meeting, man. We got another one. Yep. The door. Okay, he still canceled it. All right, hey. All right, can I give you my card then? Hey, the, the reason why I'm, I showed up and the reason why he's freaking out, I, uh, I unfortunately experienced the corruption here myself. So three years ago, I started Charlotte County Cop Watch. I was the guy that was in the newspaper and all three channels where they illegally looked me up on the David system. Not to bring me followers, but to do bad things because I'm exposing the corruption here. So that's why I think he just, I'm shocked. He shut it down. So we, we need cops. You know we need cops. I know we need cops. Just we, we're trying to show people that we're here. You can hold them accountable. You can, you know, you can do different things. You know what I mean? Is there a way to give me my business card? Sure. All right. So, in three years, by the grace of God, I'm a Christian. Uh, the YouTube channel went nuts. 40 million views. 38,000 subscribers. Uh, in fact, I'll even give you my regular card. So I'm sorry that he did this. We're, we're, we seriously are here. We need police, but we're, you know, we're, we're just to, here to let you guys know that we're here. If you ever have, you know, if you ever need any help, you know, investigate anything, or if you need a story to put out, because internal investigations won't do anything. 
Um, I, we were the ones that helped break the dog mall story. Uh, we're also the ones that did uh, in Collier County, uh, seven sheriffs beat the crap out of a white guy. He was in the hospital for three days. We broke that story. So we, re we really are trying. Okay. We're trying to help. And sorry that it shut. We are shocked that he just killed it like that. Okay. So what was your name? Reverend Brown. Reverend Howard. Please get a hold of me, man. Do you, do you guys got a card? I'm shocked. I really, really am. He, he, this, this guy right here, John Sirkin, he helps the uh, homeless over in Charlotte County. So he's going to let you guys know that he's here too. So he helps people there. In fact, you know what's crazy? He's the one that the guy that supposedly got away from the sheriff at the water and hung himself. That's the landlord. Thanks, he guys. knows the guy. This wouldn't have happened. Like the guy said, he knew the guy. He didn't hang himself. You know what I mean? 65. So, anyways, I'm sorry that it bombed out. Right. Oh, oh, are we filming? Yeah, he was supposed to be, that's what I told him. So why don't you want to do it up? Ellie Daniels. Do you not value our opinion? Alright. Officer Cole, night. ever got to face justice, Mr. Lewis? Hmm. Why, who are you with? Just a regular person? That's fine. I don't answer questions. I'm a regular person. Hey, Andrew, I wanted to meet David. Victor's friend. Okay. Andrew, who are you? Andy. Uh, no, I actually am. I'm not a regular person. Aye, aye, careful. <laughs> careful. <laughs> hey, hey, let's charge. not waste this. Let's do coffee. What's the closest thing to here for coffee? Here's my card. Because Sir uh, Can's here and everything. You didn't even get to meet him. He helps the homeless in Fort Charlotte. Oh, okay. How you doing? Hi. Hi. How you doing? Okay, where's the closest place for coffee? See you later, man. I'm short meeting. Sorry, I need more time. To I'm not sure. Let's go over here and we'll all talk. All right, John. We're gonna we're gonna discuss over here what, what we're gonna do. But be careful for those bike racks. You almost got it.